A Story of a Country That Got Isakai'd. Chapter 69, Grandu Fleet. Written by Carl D. Great. A few days have passed since the Lytenian princess arrived at the Pearl Palace. Today are the departure of the large fleet entrusted to her by her father, the king. Lytenian tradition abd structure of command dictates that if a ship of the line would depart along with a fleet with a peaceful task, a member of the royal family should take command of the said ship and fleet with the exception if the said fleet is gearing for war. Currently the kingdom has quite a number of fleets that are overseeing many trade routes, trade sectors and some overseas naval stations, in which Lila's brothers and sisters were personally leading. Being a vast maritime kingdom, the Lytenians have mastered the oceans and seas, they might falter behind Azalea and Delasla when it comes to actual naval combatants, but they as a people are very well versed in both naval combat and navigation. A large gold key hangs around the princess's neck as she departed towards the docks. Currently the crown princess, her sister Rosette are tied in overseeing the capital, she is not allowed by royal decree to go around or anywhere outside the capital. Naval Port of Fraundo Large battleships, cruisers and destroyers litter one of the largest naval base on the whole central continent. There she is sister. The Brouch Sieg, look at those massive 12 zell, inch, guns. She is the lead ship of a new class of fast battleships, with new steam turbines, it is capable to reach at least 25 chrome, knots. Apart from being heavily armored and believed to be able to withstand multiple attacks from magic arrows, the ship's interior have been redesigned from the ground up. My current flagship fails in comparison how extravagant the decks are. Prince Drenslow excitingly uttered as he accompanied his dear sister towards the dock. He he my dear brother, your fascination of ships are really mind-blowing. Laughingly replied by Lila. Sigh. My dear sister, you have only returned home and now father is sending you out again. Said the gloomy prince. Their car then stopped near the large battleship and they promptly exited the vehicle. It would only last for a couple of months my dear brother. I'll take it as another form of vacation, besides I love exploring nd learning new things. Lila replied. Without uttering a single word, her brother then reached up towards her and quickly embracing her with his muscular arms. You will or might be encountering the worst pirates on the open seas. And I know full well that our navy could easily dispatch such thugs, but keep safe sister. Uttered the prince as he held her more tightly. And by the way, say hi to Gordon to me. Ha ha ha, the prince said and then quickly dashing towards the parked vehicle. Eh. Gordon. Eh. Your greatest suitor remember. Eh. What why? Can't you remember how dramatic his proposal was when we have that ball a few years ago? Yes brother I remember that, but why? Is he accompanying me? Why are you blushing my dear sister? No. I am not. I am curious why would I need to say hi to him when I am on a voyage? Come on, being all pouty like that, that's why I can't help but tease you dear sister. Asterisk I asterisk. Gordon is currently at Droiver. The kingdom southeast of the pirate islands. He is currently leading a large merchant fleet of his father. It seems the rubber plantation on the kingdom was a success. You might encounter him at sea, so I said say him to him for me. All right brother, I get it. I'll be leaving now. See you in a few months, the princess said as she prepares to walk over the large iron bridge connecting the battleship to the port. Take care Lila. I would be watching your departure at the lighthouse. Way back at me please. I'll be only meeting some of the council. Said the prince as he departed on the royal black car, he would not be able to assist his sister as she departed the naval port as his presence are asked by the council. And as soon as the princess were able to set four on the wooden decks of the battleship, her brother's car were already nowhere to be seen. The sailors aboard then welcomed their princess with a firm salute. Princess is aboard, shouted the greeting officer. Your Highness, Admiral Stenkok is waiting at you at the bridge. Said by one of the officers. The princess then took the liberty to explore the ship a bit before she heads to the bridge. And as how her brother described, the ship's interior was revolutionary compared to their other ships. The decks are now well lit and ornamented by these large oaks contrary to dark, humid and pure steel designs by previous ships. 
and once at the bridge, a guy in light blue naval uniform with a star and anchor badge awaits her. Welcome on board the Brouch Sieg, Princess. In a few hours the ship would be ready for departure. Now before you proceed to your quarters, I'll be reviewing you how our fleet would be composed of. It's a pleasure Admiral, certainly you can discuss the fleet setup. The princess said as he reaches her purse and grabbed her eyeglasses. Very well your highness. The Grandu fleet flagger hit would of course would be the Brouch Sieg. A heavy cruiser would be protecting our rear, the Freudsau. Two light cruisers would provide further backup, these are the Hectolia and Gardenilia. For destroyers would be guarding our sides, these are the Drensdo, Drenshard, Drensfrade, and Drensgrake. We would be then supported by six armed transports, these are the Heidi, Highflo, Hygrak, Starprape, Starkike, and the Starfank. Twenty unarmed transports would then complete our small fleet. The Admiral said as he draws small wooden figures symbolizing the said ships atop the small table. The Princess are then surprised by the amount of ships the fleet would be composed of. Normally trading fleets such as this are only composed half of their current numbers which total for about 34 ships. With the debrief done, the Princess were then led to her quarters. Which is large room located at the back of the bridge superstructure. A few hours then passed by, and by lunchtime the fleet's preparation are then completed. With the news that a large fleet would be departing soon and with Princess Lila at the literal helm. Thousands of people gathered near the docks and throughout the bay. Then the princess then proceeded towards the bridge wherein she readied the large golden key dangling on her chest. The key were a traditional way of raising the ship's anchor. Although it is not needed for the system to work. It has been kept as a naval tradition and are specifically only relegate to the members of the royal family. Key identified. Raise the anchors. Starting the engines. Shouted the battleship's captain. Brouch Sieg. Launching. Shouted the princess. With anchors raised and engines piping hot. The ship's horn began to echo throughout the naval port. The Brouch Sieg then gets underway. The large battleship cuts through the calm and sparkling waters of the bay. Hundreds upon hundreds of Lytenians gasped in awe as this large battleship steams towards the open ocean. Once on the open seas, the battleship then rendezvous with the rest of the fleet and heads east towards the southern seas of the western continent. 250 nautical miles SW from Esden, Sea of Victory. A large fishing and research fleet are making their way to the southern islands at a steady pace of 13 knots. The fleet departed the Cardonian capital without much fanfare. They are tasked on a month-long voyage towards the southern islands. Once a great empire now reduced to smaller territories and self-proclaimed governments, the islands are very well known for their vast and plentiful shoals and reefs, but it was left untouched because of the pirates further east, remnants of the great imperial fleet that was said to be crushed by the Scalusians a hundred years ago. Knowing that a large amount of seafood lies dormant because of prevailing pirate threat, the Cardonian Coast Guard and Navy have teamed up to escort the large industrial size fishing fleet of a well known fishing company. Not only because the seas would provide much needed food resource, but apparently a certain kingdom further south have rubber plantations. Enough of a reason for the king himself to send the largest and much needed ships of Cardonia down south. The fleet is composed of the 100 meter Coast Guard vessel, Lana, the 95 meter flower class corvette, Santan the research vessel, inquiry and the hydrographic survey ship, the publisher. Also tagging along is the 63-meter mine countermeasure vessel, the hound along with another nine large fishing trawlers. The commanding officer for the fleet is the cousin of the regent. It would be noted that his corvette was lucky enough to get home earlier than scheduled from their months-long deployment taking part of the multinational anti-piracy coalition in the waters adjacent to Somalia. Being trained to handle pirates, the corvette, Santan is up for the job in keeping any pirates away from Thai fishing trawlers and research vessels. Just imagine, we have been doing anti-piracy missions most of the time since this ship's commissioning a few years ago. And now we are in another world and we are still we are doing anti-piracy huh? Murmured the prince's cousin, he is Captain Francis Sylvania. His father was the younger brother of the late crown prince, thus he was able to bear the family name. His father has no notion and interest in joining the royal court as such he seceded his position to his nephew, in which, is now the current regent. 
and him personally prefers his life as a sailor rather than being stressful politicians. But Captain, how credible the sources were. We would be wasting much needed fuel for the war effort if this mission goes bust. Uttered the ship's XO, obviously worried. Worry not, XO, the abundance of fishes is a given. But I can assure you that there is rubber on the southern islands. Three different merchants were able to present solid evidence when Thew presented a giant slab of slightly treated raw rubber. Replied the captain as their fleet slowly steamed south.